Nearly 200 earthquakes were recorded in Yellowstone National Park in the past two weeks. Uncover the seismic mystery that is trembling Yellowstone National Park to its core. Scientists are on high alert after hundreds of strange tremors occurred. Is this nature's way of reminding us of its power, or is it a foreshadowing of something considerably more dramatic? Join us as we go deep into America's first national park, where a seismic spectacle is unfolding and the stakes could not be higher. Also, stay tuned to see what Yellowstone officials are saying and how these tremors might affect the entire world. Yellowstone National Park, the first national park, came into existence a whopping 151 years ago on March 1, 1872. President Ulysses S. Grant made it official by signing the Yellowstone National Park Protection Act into law. It's one of the biggest and most famous parks in the whole country, covering a massive 3,500 square miles across Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho. It's sitting right on top of a volcanic hotspot, making it a hotbed for geysers. Seriously, about half of the world's active geysers are here, along with the most incredible concentration of hydrothermal features ever seen. According to the National Park Service, the law was all about reserving and withdrawing the headwaters of the Yellowstone River from any settlement, occupancy, or sale. Instead, it was dedicated and set apart as a public park or a place for people to come and enjoy themselves. How cool is that? But here's the thing, before Yellowstone became this fantastic national park, it was already a buzzing cultural hub for thousands of years. Can you believe it had ties to at least 27 different tribes? That's right! Native people had been connected to this area for ages, with the convergence of the Great Plains, Great Basin, and Plateau Indian cultures. Back in the late 1700s, adventurous fur traders embarked on a journey along the Yellowstone, a major tributary of the Missouri River. Their aim was to trade with Native Americans living in the area. Interestingly, these early travelers didn't actually notice the hydrothermal activity in Yellowstone. Instead, they probably learned about these unique features from their Native American acquaintances, as per the National Park Service. While Yellowstone is often celebrated as the world's first national park, there's a bit of debate about that. Some folks believe that Mongolia's Bod Khan Mountain National Park might have been established even earlier, possibly as far back as 1778, according to Britannica. But the official history of science in Yellowstone got its start with an exciting expedition in 1871, led by Ferdinand Hayden, who was heading the U.S. Geological and Geographical Survey of the territories at the time. This expedition brought back solid evidence supporting the earlier tales of thermal activity in the region. The world got to see the wonders of Yellowstone through the mesmerizing photographs of William Henry Jackson and the incredible art of Henry W. Eliot and Thomas Moran. Hayden was so amazed by what he saw that he commented, the geysers of Iceland sink into insignificance in comparison with the hot springs of the Yellowstone and Firehole Basins. The management of Yellowstone during the late 1800s and early 1900s played a significant role in shaping the creation of the National Park Service, which was established to specifically care for our national parks. Over the years, Yellowstone continued to expand. In 1932, President Herbert Hoover made an executive order adding more than 7,000 acres to the park. Today, it stretches an impressive 63 miles from north to south and 54 miles from east to west. On a more recent note, last summer was tough for Yellowstone as it faced record-breaking floods and treacherous mudslides. These devastating events caused homes to be washed away, bridges to be torn apart, and forced the evacuation of nearby communities left without power. Yellowstone is a supervolcano with two magma chambers, a shallower one and a much larger, deeper chamber that is five times the size. This amazing geological structure powers the park's geothermal attractions and has the potential for cataclysmic eruptions. Understanding the behavior of the volcano and the likelihood of an eruption is dependent on understanding these chambers. While the current seismic activity does not imply an impending eruption, it emphasizes the importance of continued vigilance and scientific examination in unraveling the complexity of this tremendous geological force beneath Yellowstone's peaceful surface. The Yellowstone River experienced unprecedented highs, reaching nearly 14 feet, something nobody had seen in their lifetimes. The previous record set over a century ago was 11.5 feet. 
Yellowstone National Park has hundreds of earthquakes every year because it was formed by volcanoes and rock moves under the Earth's surface. Volcanic fluid moves along the Earth's faults and cracks, and this movement happens all the time. Since there is so much going on below the surface, earthquakes are expected, but we don't feel every single one in Yellowstone. Yellowstone is a place where earthquakes and volcanoes happen all the time. In fact, Yellowstone has hundreds of earthquakes every year, but you are very unlikely to feel one while you are visiting this beautiful national park. Yellowstone Park Rangers use cutting-edge technology to keep an eye on earthquakes and volcanic action every day. They use this technology to make graphs of what's going on underground in Yellowstone to learn more about why earthquakes happen. Most earthquakes that happen in Yellowstone National Park are not very big. They range in size from less than one to almost as big as an eight on the Richter scale. But these bigger quakes don't happen very often. The last one was in 1983. Most of the earthquakes in Yellowstone are even smaller than the average, which is less than four. Since most people don't feel the many earthquakes that happen all the time, it shows that they aren't very big. In a given year, there can be anywhere from 500 to more than 3,000 earthquakes in Yellowstone National Park. It all depends on what is going on below the surface. This behavior is clearly hard to predict, but it is closely watched. There are thousands of earthquakes in Yellowstone every year, but they are not spread out evenly over the 12 months of the calendar year. Since 2017, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory has put out yearly reports with a lot of information on a wide range of topics, such as trends in ground deformation, earthquake activity, and improvements to monitoring networks. There is also information about the results of the study and new discoveries, like the fact that in 2018, a new thermal area was found near Turn Lake. The yearly report for 2022 from the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory has just been released and can be found online. As in years past, the summary shows the monitoring data that was received throughout the year. For example, there were 2,429 earthquakes in the Yellowstone area in 2022, with the biggest one happening on May 11 and having a magnitude of 4.2. This was the strongest earthquake in the area since one with a magnitude of 4.4 in 2017. The amount of earthquakes is in the normal range for an entire year, and it is a little less than what happened in 2021. About 66% of the earthquakes happened in swarms, which are groups of earthquakes that happen at the same time and in the same place. The most important swarm happened near Grizzly Lake between Mammoth Hot Springs and Norris Geyser Basin. It had more than 1,100 earthquakes and went on for the rest of the year. In the Yellowstone area, swarms of hundreds to thousands of earthquakes that last for months happen about once every few years. As has been the case since 2015, the Yellowstone caldera sank about one to two inches over the course of the year. During the summer, there was a break in the sinking or a small amount of lifting as snowmelt refilled the ground with water. Since 2018, there hasn't been much noticeable change in the Norris Geyser Basin area. In 2022, there was a lot of water in Yellowstone. In the middle of June, an atmospheric river event dumped several inches of rain on late-season snowpack. This caused catastrophic floods in the Yellowstone region and forced the park to close for a while. Flood damage made it impossible to get in and out of the park on the north and northeast main roads for the rest of the summer. Most of the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory monitoring stations were unharmed, and some of them even recorded seismic noise from the floodwaters. One river monitoring station along the Gardner River in the north of the park was buried under several feet of debris, though. All that water didn't seem to have much of an effect on Yellowstone's geothermal system, since most geysers didn't act much differently. The tallest active geyser in the world, Steamboat Geyser, erupted 11 times in 2022, keeping up a pattern of regular activity that started in 2018. Since 2019 and 2020, when there were 48 eruptions each year, the number of eruptions has been going down. This suggests that the current time of many eruptions may be coming to an end. When compared to earlier years, there were no big changes in the chemistry of gas and water or their emissions. In the area around Mud Volcano, a new monitor that can measure carbon dioxide emissions was put in place, and trips were taken to measure the chemistry of gas and water in different parts of the park, including the new thermal area near Turn Lake. There, Geochemists found that a lot of the ground just below the surface was boiling hot. Carbon dioxide emissions were higher than normal, but they were small compared to similar thermal areas. For example, they were about half as high as in the mud volcano region, 
taking into account the difference in size between the two thermal areas. The north part of Yellowstone Lake and Upper Geyser Basin were the main places where scientists looked for answers about why and how hydrothermal blasts happen in Yellowstone National Park. Cores of sediment from the bottom of Yellowstone Lake showed many thin layers of crushed rock. This shows that steam blasts of different sizes have happened over the past 14,000 years. The biggest explosions happened in neutral chloride hydrothermal areas where liquid water turned into steam. This caused the fluid to expand quickly which caused big blasts. Hydrothermal places that are mostly vapor, on the other hand, don't go through this phase change and can't have big steam explosions because of it. From Mary Bay and Elliot's Crater, where the biggest blasts happened, it's likely that earthquakes on the lake bottom changed the pressure in the hydrothermal systems on the lake floor. People think that the same things caused steam blasts in Upper Geyser Basin. There, sudden falls of loose mounds of glacial debris dumped on hydrothermal areas when the ice melted would have changed the pressure conditions in the subsurface. This would have caused water to turn into steam, expand quickly, and explode. The main reason for this strange grouping of earthquakes is that the volcanic material below the top of the earth is always moving all at once. This causes a chain reaction and gives these earthquakes a unique swarming appearance. Yellowstone has many small earthquakes instead of one big one. This is because of the geothermal activity bubbling just below the surface. Scientists at the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory are also learning more about how complicated the big volcanic explosion 631,000 years ago that made the Yellowstone caldera was. At first, scientists thought that the Lava Creek Tuff, which is a pile of ash from that blast, was made up of two geological units. While mapping the rocks on the Sour Creek Dome on the eastern side of Yellowstone caldera, scientists from Montana State University found several new parts of the Lava Creek Tuff. This means that the eruption was much more complicated than was thought before, and more work needs to be done to figure out the details of its past. As usual, monitoring data and study results keep opening up new ways to learn more about how volcanoes, earthquakes, and hydrothermal activity work in Yellowstone. In 2023, the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory will try to build on these results. Work is already being done in the field. You shouldn't be affected in any way by the earthquakes that happen in Yellowstone National Park. We've already said that most people don't feel these shocks, no matter how close they are to the epicenter. Even though these quakes aren't very big, Yellowstone Park rangers always keep an eye on earthquake activity by using a lot of different places and meters. But it's interesting to see how much volcanic action goes on below Yellowstone's surface. Since three different supervolcanoes exploded millions of years ago and made this unique park and landscape, it makes sense that there is still a fair amount of volcanic activity. Yet, as the Yellowstone Volcano Observatory diligently monitors this enigmatic terrain, it's a reminder that the park's dynamic beauty is intricately woven into its geological fabric, where past eruptions have sculpted the present and where vigilance meets appreciation in the face of nature's enduring power. That's all for today. Don't miss out on the latest updates about Yellowstone's seismic activities and other fascinating natural wonders. Hit that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you never miss a moment of our thrilling exploration. And share this video with your friends and fellow nature enthusiasts to spread the word about Yellowstone's seismic mysteries. Stay tuned until next time.